Welcome back everyone for episode 2 of this little series in which I try to give you an overview of Cerberus, its latest and probably last release, release 1.2, which is just out, and give you an overview of the functionality and the capabilities of this machine. In episode 1 we covered the basics, uh, the vanilla stuff that comes with the distribution. From this point on I want to show you what other people have done uh, with Cerberus, and in this episode in particular I want to, to illustrate to you, to demonstrate to you the flexibility of this machine. Because remember, as we talked about in the previous episode, there is no ROM here. There are only 64 kilobytes of RAM. It's RAM, RAM, RAM and RAM in here. Um, and the, the basic input-output system, the BIOS, is stored in the uh, uh, built-in flash memory of the I.O. controller. So it doesn't occupy any address space because the I.O. controller has a Harvard architecture which splits out the address space for instruction memory. So uh, you have 64 kilobytes contiguous entirely available uh, to the user. Uh, the the um, memory map is programmable, it depends on what you put on the BIOS. The only thing that is hardwired is that this has got to be uh, the video memory and this has got to be the character memory. But together they are 4 kilobytes. So you have 60 kilobytes across these two chips which you can use in any way you want uh, by modifying the BIOS. So you can basically load kernels and load uh, basic interpreters uh, anywhere you want uh, 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 across these 60 kilobytes. The machine allows uh, for it because it doesn't come with any pre-programmed ROM in the main address space, as I just explained. So today I'm going to show you uh, the work Gordon and Henderson has, has done. Excellent work. He ported an operating system called Ruby OS. He ported it to the 6502 in Cerberus. Uh, it will be allocated to the low memory. And he also ported BBC Basic Interpreter version 4, which is well recognized, uh, uh, well acknowledged to be the best basic interpreter uh, of the 80s. Well, even objectively speaking, it has won the benchmarks of the time. So that's an excellent basic interpreter. It will be uh, uh, loaded here uh, in the high memory. And Gordon also changed the BIOS. And the reason he changed the BIOS is that, look, uh, the, the vanilla BIOS that comes with the, the distribution allows the I.O. controller to issue commands to the CPUs, but not the other way around. And, uh, of course, if you put a BASIC interpreter running on the 6502, BASIC has file commands like load and save. Uh, so, from the BASIC interpreter, you need to get to the microSD card. But the CPU is not connected to the microSD card directly. It has to go through the I.O. controller. So, we needed a BIOS that would accept commands issued from the CPUs to the BIOS to load or save files uh, to the micro SD card in here. So Gordon just modified the BIOS to allow for that. I'm hoping that uh, once the work of all these people is, is more mature, that we will converge to some kind of consensus BIOS that would be compatible with what everybody is doing. But uh, for now, of course, you know, Cerberus is so flexible and you are a programmer, you're clever, you know how to do things. The BIOS is just an Arduino sketch, extremely accessible. Of course, people go and change it to suit their taste and what they want to do and you know, the, the ideas they have. There is no problem with that. Cerberus was made for it. Uh, and honestly, uh, to load a new BIOS is so trivial. I, I will do it for you now. I will, to show it to you, I will load uh, Gordon's BIOS uh, into the I.O. controller, which we call CAT, just by using this little FTDI adapter to just connect here to the side of the board. And then with one... Uh, command issued from a command window on my PC, the new BIOS will be loaded. Let me do it right now. There we go. It's uh, uploading the new BIOS. You see the blinking LEDs here on the FTDI adapter. It's a matter of a few seconds to load and then to verify. And CAT, the I.O. controller, will be running a different BIOS, a different Arduino sketch, which will allow for it to receive commands from the CPUs which is what Gordon did. There we go, it reboots itself uh, automatically, 
So now we are in Gordon's uh, bias. It has a different look, as you see. So now what we are going to do is, remember, uh, there is no ROM. So now we have to create virtual ROMs. Uh, uh, we have to load uh, Gordon's operating system in the low memory. But before I do that, let me just go to 8 megahertz, because why to run it slower when we can run it faster? So now we load Ruby OS into address C000, which is here in the low memory. It's not at the bottom of the low memory because the very bottom is reserved for the 6502's notorious uh, page zero, the stack. There is some other stuff going on in here. So uh, Gordon wanted to load uh, his operating system on address C00 physically on this chip in here. So let's just do that. Let's uh, load it. And Gordon implemented this little progress bubble on the right side of the screen. So you know that a file is being loaded. OK, now it's loaded. So now we have an operating system occupying a small segment of this RAM chip. And it's a kind of virtual kernel ROM, so to say. Uh, you see, the programmer can configure the machine to put virtual ROMs anywhere <laughs> the programmer wants. So there is a virtual kernel ROM uh, here right now. Uh, we need to load the basic interpreter. It's called BBC. It's called basic four. It's basically BBC basic interpreter version four. And we will load it in address 8000, which is the beginning of the high memory, this chip in here. So the lower addresses of this RAM will now be occupied with the virtual basic interpreter ROM so to say. So yes, you have to type two more commands before you can just start using basic. And you may say, oh, it's more complicated than the old machine. Yeah, but the old machines could only be one thing. And this can be anything. It can be a 6502 machine, a Z80 machine. It can run any kernel you want, any basic interpreter you want, or a fourth interpreter, which hopefully will be coming, or anything else you want. You know, the price you pay, you have to type two extra <laughs> commands before you start. So let's run now. And if we run now, we go to the operating system running on this chip. And there you see it, Ruby OS 64 kilobytes by Gordon Henderson. So now we have a CPM-like uh, operating system with a number of commands that you can see in there. Uh, and the, uh, the, the thing to notice now is that you, know, you have co commands like save and load, just like we had on the original BIOS here running on the IO controller. But now this OS is running on the 6502. This is no longer the BIOS on the I.O. controller. Now it's an operating system stored in low memory, as if it were a segment of it were a ROM, a kernel ROM. And it's being executed by the 6502. And of course, if you issue a load command to the 6502, it will talk to the I.O. controller in order to access the files, because the I.O. controller is in between. Actually, to talk to the I.O. controller via Spacer, because the I.O. controller only talks to Spacer directly. So the 6502 needs to issue an instruction via Spacer to the I.O. controller to load or save a file in the microSD card. Uh, you have commands like cat catalog, an old CPM command. So if I type cat, it will just list what is on the microSD card uh, right now. This also happens. Uh, by the 6502 talking to the I.O. controller via spacer, and then the I.O. controller talks to the microSD card uh, to give you that screen. So there you have it. Uh, uh, this is the, the Ruby operating system with its commands. Now remember that we already put a basic interpreter here in the high memory, at, starting at address 8000. So if we type go on this operating system, it will just go to, to that loaded image on address 8000. It's configured to go and execute whatever is on address 8000. So we type go. And now we are in basic. So now we can do, do CLS, a clear screen. We can pr print stuff on the screen. And there you go. It's, it's just BBC Basic Interpreter version 4 in all its glory. And of course, we got to do the traditional thing that, oh, uh, that everybody does. Hello world. <laughs> yeah, let me put line one CLS list run. Oh, 
what have I done wrong? <laughs> oh, of course, go to 10. Hello world! <laughs> running on top of BBC Basic Interpreter 4, running on the 6502. And on top of the Ruby operating system. So you see, this is now a CPM-like uh, uh, machine, except that it's a 6502, <laughs> not a Z80. It's running its own operating system. On the 6502, the I.O. controller now is the sort of slave uh, of the CPU, not the other way around, as Cerberus comes configured uh, to assume. In the vanilla configuration, the I.O. controller is the master. The CPUs are the slaves. The I.O. controller tells the CPU, go and execute that code in memory. Now the CPU is telling the I.O. controller, you know, go fetch me a file or save a file or give me an interrupt, whatever. So if we just uh, uh, load an application, let me load uh, more. This, this is just a BBC basic uh, program. If I clear the screen and list it, there you have it. It's just a small uh, uh, BBC basic uh, program and it draws some lines on the screen. Now the thing to keep in mind is the following. Gordon uh, so far has just ported Ruby OS and BBC Basic 4 to, to Cerberus without optimizing those two applications for the capabilities of Cerberus. So every graphics command now just uses the default block uh, graphics characters that are in the character memory. It doesn't attempt to redefine those uh, um, characters to create uh, high definition uh, drawings, uh, which is very well possible because remember, all 256 character bitmaps in Cerberus are stored in a dual ported RAM. So they can be redefined at, at will on the fly. So in effect, you have 256 eight by eight pixel sprites that you can use whatever way you want just by uh, loading bytes on the character memory and changing the definitions bitwise. Um, we will see uh, again Manic Miner that does use this capability of Cerberus. So you basically have high definition graphics and you use the characters as sprites. Uh, you, you, you don't have transparency, but again, it's a black and white architecture. So <laughs> transparency is sort of a, a little bit redundant. Um, but Ruby OS and BBC Basic 4, as they are implemented now, do not use the high resolution capabilities. So we will only see some block graphics drawings on the screen if I type run. So let's go have a look. There we go. You have these more uh, patterns. Um, it's very blocky for today's standards. Cerberus can do a lot better than that as we are going to see soon in one of the next episodes. But for me, it's still very nostalgic. Um, my first computer back in 81 or 82, I don't quite remember, was a ZX81 with block graphics uh, like this. Um, and I was fascinated by this, these drawings just coming up on my screen. Of course, they were a lot slower than what you're seeing right now. Cerberus is running at eight megahertz um, and the CPU is not burdened with having to generate the screen. The, uh, the, the screen, the, the, the video circuitry here on, on the top or on the lower part for you, uh, is what uh, generates uh, the screen without the CPU having to lose any time doing that. So what you're seeing now is a lot faster than what the ZX81 could do running the same code. Uh, but still, it's, uh, <laughs> it's very nostalgic uh, to see this on the screen. There is more. So let's just uh, stop this, clear the screen. So that's our program. So let's clear the memory. Okay, we have nothing now there. Clear the screen again. And let's load uh, another file called uh, mandel40.bbc for BBC Basic. Uh, this basically draws a Mandelbrot fractal on the screen by using the standard graphics again. Um, if we would uh, rewrite this code for Cerberus, of course, we would go for high resolution graphics by changing the 256 character bitmaps uh, here, since it can be done so quickly um, and on the fly, but that has not been done yet. So right now, this just uses the standard um, characters uh, uh, to, to generate a Mandelbrot-like 
pattern uh, on the screen. Um, let me change, no, no let, let it go like this. I just want to add CLS on the first line. Um, so this clean start, the screen starts clear. And you see it will slowly draw, relatively slowly, I mean, compared to how it would run on a PET or <laughs> on a TRS-80, this will be blazing fast. Uh, but it's relatively slow the way it draws um, the fractal because again, to compute a fractal takes uh, uh, it's quite heavy computationally. Um, it will not look like a fractal unless you take some distance and and look at the resulting pattern from like a couple of meters, two meters, and then you realize why it's picking the characters it's picking, uh, and you you will see that it's actually a Mandelbrot. So let's let me just stop talking and and run the thing. <laughs> So what you're seeing now uh, is in real time. Um, I will probably fast forward from now, so you see, so you don't have to wait uh, a minute or so. So let me fast it forward. There you go. It has completed execution in just under uh, 80 seconds. So I think uh, this is it for now, uh, uh, what I wanted to show you in this episode. Um, in the next episodes, there are two more episodes I'm planning, at least two. Um, in one of them, I want to show you a high resolution application that was written for Cerberus. It's a port of Manic Miner, the famous ZX uh, Spectrum game from the 80s. Uh, but it has not been just ported. It has been uh, rewritten, sort of, to take advantage of the high-resolution graphics capabilities of Cerberus, um, in which you basically interpret the 256 character bitmaps as sprites that you can use any way you want. So that I want to show you, and I want to show you a port of the same BBC Basic interpreter, but this time to the Z80. Uh, it's Z80 BBC Basic 4. Uh, done by uh, Dean Belfield. Uh, Manic Miner has been done by, by Andy, uh, uh, Andy Toon. Um, so these are the two other things I'm still looking forward uh, to showing you. So soon enough I'll be back. Uh, until then, take care.